Welcome to the Wally Show Aftercast, all the stuff we did not get to during the course of the show today. Uh, I got an email from uh, Jensen. Uh, it says, uh, you know, hey, uh, Wally, I was listening to the podcast last week, and you had a mini rant. And after that, I said, there's the Wally. There's the Wally. I miss all his ranting. All I want to say is keep on ranting. Uh, so thank you, Jensen. Betty Rock is like, Jensen. don't encourage him. Come on. Don't like, encourage him. You can get him. that anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> no, you can't. Not like this. Not like this. It's done special. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, actually, and, and speaking of that, because I, uh, I got another email from somebody last night, and, it, it, and I want to be very clear with them, and I want to be very clear on the aftercast as well. Um, like, I definitely will go off on rants and things like that, things I believe and I'm passionate about. And I know I have uh, gone off on uh, some of the LGBTQ stuff that is coming up, the agenda and the movement, and uh, talking about the shooter from the other day. And I had strong opinions on that. And I got a really interesting uh, email from someone who was like, hey, I agree with your opinions on this, and I think it is going to get blown out of proportion, and it's going to be damaging, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And, And then at the end, they were like, and I'm part of the LGBT community and oh, wow. yeah I know and I thought that was a really interesting thing but I've I've emailed back and forth with this person a bunch of times and the thing I really appreciated about it was I I I like when you can call out hypocrisy inside of your own culture, whatever that culture is. Even in church culture, you call out the hypocrisy because that way when you say things, they, people know you don't have an agenda if you're willing to turn the uh, spotlight on yourself and what you believe. you know. And so I, I had a really good conversation with this person. But what I wanted to, to be very clear about, and I said this to them, but I want to say it here for everybody to make sure that people know, when I'm going off about things like that, I I have a problem with the movement, okay? Like Black Lives Matter, for example. I don't have a problem with black people at all, but I don't like what the movement became. LGBTQ. I don't have a problem with the people, but I don't like the the movement. Democrats. I don't have a problem with the people, but I don't like the far left craziness. Christians. I don't have a problem with the people, but I don't like the ultra right wing conservative. We can't, you know, get out of our own way thing either. Like it's always those extremes that, that that's my problem. And that's what I push against. When I get it down to a one-on-one basis with people, Mm -hmm. I do love people. I feel for people that struggle through whatever it is they're struggling through. Because I know what that's like. I know what it's like to struggle through different things like addiction or what have you, you know. And so I I just – I felt like – even though this person and I weren't having an argument, it was a great conversation, uh, and I value their opinion. I just want to make sure that people that listen to the podcast can distinguish between the two. Because in my head, I distinguish between sure. the two. Right. But as I verbalize things, I think it could be very easily misconstrued yes. as agenda against people. And that's not the case. Yes, because I think most of us, and you included, have a hard time separating someone's beliefs from who them as a person mm-hmm, or something true. that they've done right. separating them from them as a person because in our religion we're called to love others and it can be hard if they've offended us or if they stand for something that we don't believe in but i guess what you're trying to say is that you are when you're going off on these rants you have uh separated the two yeah because it's not about the person that's struggling or not even struggling that they choose to live in that community you know like that and like it's not about that it's for me it's about when the agenda is like (laughs) we need to put money towards drag time story hour and then censor a christian that wants to do a book about kids uh you know just being made in the image of god like Mm -hmm. that is the hypocrisy that drives me nuts Mm -hmm. and the agenda that drives me nuts and that's the stuff that I, i will continue to fight that regardless of what the thing is there are things that i that i feel passionate about that i think are wrong that i will talk about and i'll always shoot straight with people i'll tell people what i believe and what i think now i could be wrong absolutely i could be wrong and you're more than welcome to disagree with me but i do appreciate when people disagree agreeably you know like when you hit me up like i got an email the other day from somebody who did a snap judgment if you listened to the podcast yesterday where we talk about songs we like and don't like and i didn't like the chris tomlin song and this person was incensed uh you should never do that that is so wrong Mm -hmm. you and this is the voice in my head i hear and i you have lost four listeners and you might not care about that but uh you i this demands an apology and i'm not going to listen until apology is made and then I'm like well how would you know like if you're not listening anymore you see the lunacy in your statement right but i chose not to point that out i really wanted to <laughs> uh but i chose the path of kindness and i i was like look we have a difference of opinion on this uh it goes back to when i say i like a song 
then you know I like a song because there's not an agenda. Mm -hmm. You know, if I say everything's great, then you never know what to believe, you know, and stuff. And it's the same thing with with these other, you know, issues. When you, if you're not willing to turn the spotlight on yourself, then people don't take you seriously Mm -hmm. if you have an an issue with something, you know. And so, anyway, really good, like, emails. And I love potties. Thank you for your emails. Uh, Here's a headline that uh, you didn't think needed to be a headline. I was flipping through uh, news stuff today. Get this. West Virginia bans marriage for children age 15 or younger. Like, wow. How is that still a headline today? Wow. So, like, until they banned it, like... Yeah, it was uh, until yesterday. Some 14-year-old yes. could get married? Yes. West Virginia will no longer allow what children the? under 16, under 16, uh, to marry after the governor signed a compromise bill. <laughs> it's so funny they had to be a compromise bill between uh, Democrats and Republicans on this one. Um, it says now that new bill allows children ages 16 and 17 to get married with restrictions. Under the new law, <laughs> those minors can get parental <laughs> consent uh, to marry someone that is no more than four years older than them. Because if you think about it, if you are 16 Mm -hmm. and you are marrying a Mm -hmm. 20-year-old, that is... Abuse. I mean, that is that would it would be like you could go to jail for that because you're a minor and this person is not. And mm-hmm. so this law is uh, putting in place parental guidance in there because up to this point, um, you could get married without parental consent if a judge allowed it. Like, I guess you'd have to stand before the judge, make your case as to why you should be getting married and stuff. And so it's just, it's craziness. But then you think about it. You go, okay, let's say you have a daughter and a son that are 16, 17, and they mess up and, the, you know, they get pregnant. And mm-hmm. so then you're like, okay, well, do you then say, okay, well, you, you should get married and, you know, live your lives together? Right. Or do you say, okay, well, you guys are going to get married in eight, when you turn 18, you know, and so I don't right. know what the best answer is uh-huh. that navigating that as a parent. I don't know. You know? Right. And it's crazy to think, too, that kids want to get married that early or are getting young that I mean, are getting married that young. I, I know my grandparents like my grandma was 16 yeah. when she got married. Yeah. And my grandpa, I think, was 19. Like, it's just crazy to think that that was even And it was okay. possible. Like, that would be statutory now. Like, you could. Right. That would, you would be a predator. Your, right. Your grandfather would. It's just you know? so weird. You go to jail. It's, it's it's crazy. But again, West Virginia had the highest rate of child marriages among all the states, if, if you were well, curious. That's not surprising. I Checks out. But I just, again, I was like, that's a headline. Okay. This is where we're at yeah, today. Don't expect that. that yeah, in 2023, kind of that's what we're doing. We hear. Here. Did somebody turn on the heater in here? Do you yes. smell it? No, yeah. the, the, the I smell it. I smell. Um, I bet someone's putting has something in the toaster oven. Oh, is my is eh, my prediction? It's Jake. Jake's using the toaster oven. It's, it's a, it's a okay. strawberry pop tart. Oh, okay, someone's burning something. I just thought. Oh, do we need to leave or just is there a fire? Go down with the ship. We've had sparklers <laughs> on in here. We've not le- like we we're good. I remember we got in trouble sure. for that too. Somebody was mad about that. You're like you could have burned down the building. I'm like with a sparkler. Oh, it was like three sorry. bosses ago. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Oh, we've had so many bosses, and we are getting yet another one. It's so great. I cannot wait uh, to see who we get. Uh, Lady Rock, what do you have for uh, Aftercast today? Well, it's going to start a little rant, so everyone buckle up. By who? You or me? Not me. I want to hear Benny rant. Oh, I know. I don't. I don't think I'll rant. I'm very calm today, even though I've had lots of caffeine. <laughs> oh, it's controlled caffeine. It is right. I mean, you've been talking 90 miles an hour. I right? actually yeah, have. Yeah. But I, I have, have it under control. Just I mean, like, it's not even that big of a deal. I mean, it was a little, it was a I'm exhausted. It's different than like the normal, like you kind of go through the woo, like yeah. the screaming version yeah. of yourself. Today, it's just. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on 10. You're like okay. a lasso. <laughs> okay. Uh, mine is about the show Friends. Oh, I love Friends. Friends. Wait for it. No one told you that was going to be this way. Um, Nailed it. Yeah, that's our rule. You have to wait for the clap and you have to do it. Okay, go. Um, Jennifer Aniston, who played Rachel, uh, she said that she's saddened by the fact that the kids of this generation, they're going back and they're watching that show because it is available, I believe, on HBO Max. Sure. But they're finding things in the show that are offensive to them. Well, because this generation's mm-hmm. offended by everything. Okay. Yes, that's very true. True statement. Rant, uh, rant started. Right. And another thing, no. <laughs> but she, uh, she did say in a recent interview, she said, quote, there were things that were never intentional. So, uh, so yes, you could be 
offended by something that was said, but it was the 90s and things have changed since then. I mean, we could even say in the 90s, there were things that they were watching from the 60s and they'd be like, oh my goodness, like things change. Context changes. And then things that like were at one time seen as not bad then can morph and become bad. What I'm curious about is where did this happen? Like, because I know me for myself, I did not teach my daughter to be offended by everything. In fact, I would say things to shock her to hope Hopefully think she'd like be like uh, immune to it, you know, well, and, like I she th- knows my dark sense of humor. And I'm like, how did she become this kid that her generation is gets offended? So I easy? think it's easy to be offended. Who taught him this? Uh, also, I think all of us. It's easy to play the victim card. Yeah. Uh, if you're the victim, then everyone has to cater to you. And that's what we want. Um, also, I think we have too much time on our hands. But they play and the when victim card for other people. That's what I can't understand. But I think we have too much. What, that's what I'm saying. Let, let me finish. No. I think we have too much time on our hands. And so we get on social media. We have time to be offended, have time to think on it and have those imaginary conversations like you find yourself having in the shower on your way to work. And you get offended about something and you take it out of context. And so then if you don't have anything that you can get offended about personally, you're going to get offended for someone else. I also Mm -hmm. think that we've got too much access to opinions too like if you talk about social media, media yeah. like, like when that. i yeah. was a kid the only opinions i had like access to and you know maybe that having more opinions can broaden your perspective on things i think can be a good thing and a bad thing but when i was a kid the only perspectives i had in my life were my two parents my teachers and maybe a few friends we're or, not talking about like thousands of mm-hmm. quote unquote experts opinions on things that are not quite that important. But that's a good point about opinions because the the movie The Social Dilemma, the documentary, shows that Facebook will super serve you yeah. things that definitely agree 100% with you or things that are 100% 180 degrees opposite of you, Mm -hmm. because now you're being entrenched with what you believe Mm -hmm. and you're being angered by what you don't believe. And the algorithm does that intentionally. So, yeah, I, I would I would think that, like, say you have political leanings that are left and liberal or whatever. If that's the voice you're hearing from so many things that get served to you, then it becomes magnified. And then you think the rest of the world is wrong because they don't believe mm-hmm. like you do. And so that's that's a really good uh, point on that. Uh, she went on to say something in that, that yes. I thought was really interesting. So she did say that she believes we've lost the ability to laugh at bigots. Yes. Just because people can't handle the subject matter. She said be- uh, it's it's it was about educating people on how ridiculous people were, and now we're not allowed to do that. We've lost a good learning tool. So being able to laugh at... Because there are characters on that show that everyone knows they're they're wrong. Right. And they're being ridiculous. Right. But, and that's how they can get away with saying something. But that was okay back then. Now it's not okay See, anymore. You, you look at The Office and the things that Michael Scott oh, would gosh, say yeah. that come off like super racist or homophobic or whatever. Why do you think they put that in there? A, they put it in there because you know it was a, it was a funny joke. But B, there's a subtext of he's saying the complete wrong thing through this character to put a spotlight on the lunacy of it so that when the other perspective from Jim or Pam or whoever comes comes around and that is more normal, it makes it like stand out is that's insane. Mm -hmm. We've lost the ability. Kids have lost the ability to be able to distinguish satire, to be able to distinguish things like that, that they then they just take it as on face value of, oh, this is a bigoted show or whatever. They're like, you've missed the subtlety of the context saying, no, this is wrong. This is not what someone would truly ever believe. And it's okay to laugh at it because it is an essence still a morality play on what the right thing to do is. They're just doing it through humor. That's how comedy works. And I think kids have lost their stupid sense of humor because they don't they haven't been taught, you know, this. Right. I agree. I agree. I, I was looking at um, this article that I I Googled, like, what is offensive about the show Friends? Because I'm kind of curious. Yeah. I've, I've seen some episodes and I I don't know what it is. Um so one of the things was pretty much everything about Fat Monica. Do you remember that Monica had a <laughs> had a part where like before she lost all this weight, she right. put on this fat suit. Right. And they always like were she was talking about food and like she yeah, was so right. eager to 
and they would make jokes at her expense. Right. So some people find that offensive, especially because now there's a body shaming movement. Well, of so course. You can't. You can't say that. Right. You, know, you can't. But yeah. do you think that it was like, oh yeah, we are going to shame people, and people infer things because they can't read through the subtleties and the context again, and so all they do is take it on face value and go, oh, you're making fun of fat people. No, there's a joke in there, but there's truth in there too about overeating, mm-hmm. or there's truth in there about struggling with this, and and they they just totally miss out on all of that. Well, stuff. and also like for any person who like went through like a weight loss journey, I feel like you're so much more willing to, in essence, like laugh at your at a, at a former version of yourself. Like mm-hmm. I feel like I'm more comfortable being like, oh yeah, like that's the old Caleb, and like you mm-hmm. you can I can pinpoint when I think of like a you know bigger version of myself, like I can pinpoint like all of the food related things that like I was like uber centering my life around and. This is sometimes it's funny to look back on. Yeah, uh, yeah, we just we've lost our sense of humor. You uh, know? Another thing that people find offensive is the lack of diversity. So every character on well, that show, just television in is, like the nineties, uh, that's yeah. not just friends. It's white. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I guess I could I get where you say, well, this isn't representative of my oh, sure. life, and I don't have a character that represents me. To me, yeah, like. Diversity for the sake of diversity is not the way to handle it. To me, it is about writing good characters. And yeah, could they, could they have done better at having uh, you know black characters, Asian characters, whatever that weren't stereotypes and were good? Yeah, absolutely. Like the characters, uh, American Auto is a uh, show that is it's not the best show of content wise. Like there's some really funny things in it. Like there's some mo- moments that are funny um, in it. But they did they've done a really good job. There's like two there's three black characters that are so strong so good and it, and it's not about race with them but the character is good mm-hmm. and so you write a good character that can stand in any it can stand on its own regardless of race and then if you fill that with um, a race that is definitely diverse to help with the cast it's great it, it's when you write stereotypes oh we gotta have a black character get one in there just like when um uh, television shows like sitcoms were on their way out and they were downward smile. Gotta bring in a new cute kid and they'd throw Cousin Oliver on the Brady Bunch or they'd mm-hmm. throw Rudy on the Huxtables, you know? And and it's like, yep, there's the stereotype. It's like, no, write good characters that are able to be embodied by multiple races and then you've got good content. And where it's not about the race, it's about the quality of the character. Yeah, I think at some point it could be kind of like fashion where, you know, if... If the world keeps going, people are going to be so sensitive, so sensitive. But who's to say that the kids that are born by the sensitive people are going to be like, that's ridiculous. I'm yeah. just going to say what I want to say. And then it's going to go swing the other way. You, know, I, you just never know. Yeah, I am real curious. Like 50 years from now, how old will I be? I'll, oh, I'll be dead. Okay, yeah. so 40 <laughs> years from now. You're not making it 50 years. What am I, 94, 40 years from now? Yeah, 94. My my breeding, I'll probably still be alive uh, <laughs> if, I, if I get my mom and my grandmother's side. Mm. Uh, so I'll probably still be alive. But to see like the kids now that are you know uh, 20 and they're in their 60s uh, mm-hmm. then I will be fascinated mm-hmm. to see what our world looks like oh yeah like do they do they come around and everybody kind of chills out and and it grows up a little bit as you get older and every generation does that or do we have a generation in their 60s that is still offended by everything and then it's like I think I think if that's the case it's like when you have extremes why do you think Republicans have swung so far to the right and have been so dogmatic and unyielding because everything swung so far to the ludicrous left that they felt their only option was to be over here as far on the right versus being somewhere in the middle. Right. I think it's the same thing. I'm curious, like years from now, will, you know, because it was so far over here on the left and these kids being so sensitive, will it swing? Will their kids swing back to the right and be like, yeah, my grandma's crazy. I can't believe she was offended by everything. And then comedy gets better again, you know? Mm hmm. So the next generation, the second generation back, we might actually have some good comedians. I don't even know how we have comedians that are kids anymore. There's, I, I don't know how they're going to do it. Like because right. comedy has a victim, mm-hmm. you know, usually, and 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 comedy does that. But who knows, you know, like your daughter Haley, if she ends up 
being a mom and having kids, yeah. that kid could inherit your sense of humor. Oh, I and, hope so. And it'll be, oh, and it'll drive her crazy. And yeah. she'll be like, stop saying horrible things. You can't say that in public. It'll be my best day if she is nervous about sending the uh, grandkid to spend time with me. Uh, like that'll be, I will be mission accomplished. <laughs> that's when you'll just like, that's when you'll be like, oh, you're nervous about that? Let me just buy the house next door. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's funny because I see my daughter now more so like, because we'll send TikToks back and forth and and some that are funny, but you're like, oh, that one's that's cringy. Uh, and so she'll send me stuff or I'll send her stuff and I'll just get a, a text back that's like all capitals, B-A-H, B-A-H, like, bah, oh. like, so I see her, I do see her now that she's not surrounded by these offended, like crazy liberal kids anymore. I see her swinging back to having more common sense. Mm. And I and I really enjoy oh, that. Sense. Well, it is. I mean, it is, no, honestly. I mean, like as the, like as someone who spent time at like a liberal college in Illinois for four years, like yeah. it is uh, placated is probably the wrong word. But like there is just so much of the far left yeah. movement within liberals. Cause I think a lot of those people are 20 something year old kids who think they know best. It's like, you know, when a, when a, when a teenager thinks they know best, that's, that's like not as bad as like a 22 year old who thinks they know the right. entire world's political landscape at yeah. best. So yeah. and it's, it's, it's a, it's a weird place. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. Lady rock. Mm -hmm. Do you have some birthdays for me? Birthday. I do not. <gasps> Oh, that's sad. But I have a question. I would love your questions. Um, and this one is from Julie. All it's right. aimed towards you. Oh, okay. Uh, and I don't want you to take offense, okay? I won't. I don't get offended by anything. <laughs> okay. I get offended by stupidity. I do get offended <laughs> by stupidity. Then you must be offended at yourself all the time. All the time. Hey. Look in the mirror like, hey. All right, go. When Wally goes bald. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. It's assuming. <laughs> will he wear a toupee? Or a mm. wig. I was dead set against toupees for a long time until I saw that Asian guy on TikTok who they play a song and he puts on like eight different toupees like really fast. And I'm like, if I could like get a toupee that would look like that, like I could look like a kid from BTS, like absolutely. They have really upped their yeah. game in the toupee department. It's amazing. There's like, yeah, it's like while he's saying on TikTok, oh. well, a wig covers the whole head. The toupee, whereas is, a toupee just the top, is just right? the top. Yeah. yeah. But in the toupee game, they have really yeah. upped. It because I mean they I've watched TikToks where they will take a handful of the hair and they'll try and pull it yeah. off. Oh, the head like it's not just a cheesy not little budge. wind's not gonna. What? Yeah, no, mm -hmm. fascinating though is this guy has the male pattern baldness where it's all bald down the middle, but he has the whole back that wraps around. But the way they shave the back out, it it kind of is like at an angle out. So right. when he puts the toupee on, it fits in it perfectly, yeah. and you can't. And his look changes dramatically. Oh yeah, he looks younger. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Goodness. Yeah, I can't even tell how old the guy is. I have he no idea. He looks more like you'd respect him. Yeah, there's like, times he looks, he looks like business, a leader. but then there's times like he looks like I want to party and I want to party <laughs> with that guy. We're gonna listen to BTS and go nuts. Uh, yeah, that's what happens. Back to boy bands. I, I know, I know, it's great. But so yeah, would I do that? I don't know. Um, there, my my probable option would be to just shave my head completely. Yes, uh, I think that's where I would go, mm -hmm. and then I would that's definitely what you should do. I would definitely start tattooing like way no, more. I would do honestly. Ball. Oh, tattoos. Yeah, oh. I would. I would. Marty stuff. wouldn't let you. Uh, I. My problem is like I'm not sure what I would want enough as a, to get to cover all of a sleeve. Like I'm not the guy that's going to get like an American flag that covers half your shoulder. So I don't know what I, I, I would want. I will say this. I think that if you go down like the you know the sleeve route, yeah. I think you're going to need to start wearing a little bit more. Um, solid colored shirts okay. because I feel like it'd be very interesting to have crazy fun pattern sure. flower shirt Good into point. crazy different pattern on yeah. your arm. You're going to want to <laughs> sync that up. Because when you look at a lot of people that do sleeves, like they'll do like tribal stuff and just graphic designs. Eagles and, they'll, and dragons. And, yeah, and then they'll do like flowers and stuff. Like even these like tough military guys like, why you do you see, have my that's hibiscus? another factor you don't have working for you. What's that? The, tough military. The tough military yeah, oh, I'll have to work thing. out like, too. I'll have to start working out. You're going to have to really yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to get beefcake. Absolutely. <laughs> so you're gonna shave your head. So yeah. instead of buying a wig or yeah. a toupee, taking the easy route, yeah. you're gonna shave your head completely and start working out. Yeah. And get now, tattoos. now that you say it out loud, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go get a toupee. Way easier. <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah, that'd be funny to get a toupee. Like if you were smart to get a toupee that's not a full head of hair, but also is a little receding, so people believe it more. Oh. Like, like the 
unbelievable well, you pay. You can't be like 75 with yeah. like a gorgeous head of hair. Yeah, like how smart would that be? I can't be like that guy on ABC News. We all would like oh, his hair. Oh, that guy. That might be a What's toupee. his name? Ian, I think. Oh. Yeah, I think his name is The one Ian. that like we can't look up his age. He's yes. British, yeah, he's got a British accent. Oh, he's, he's great. a silver fox. And you're like, I don't know if that's even real. Like, I think it, it could, is. It could be a, a toupee himself. And, and we just will never know. And then you've got the younger English version of him that you're like, that's got to be his kid. But it's not. Oh, uh, yeah. Those I two guys have guy. great yeah, yeah. hair. They do. And they didn't get smacked by the uh, UK British teeth curse either. Ian That's Panel. true. Yeah, but Ian Panel, know, yeah. And you know, too, you don't, you typically see those type of men on TV. Yeah, well, yeah, that's true. The, the more aged, balding, shorter radio <laughs> in a Hawaiian shirt, absolutely. <laughs> Ryan Seacrest was uh, able to make it out of radio because he happened to be like really good looking, mm. and so that's why he could get out of radio. No, have you seen his yearbook photo? No, you could not even tell it was him. Let me look it up. Really, you're you gonna to be shocked. That. Is it like dorky? Oh yeah, you. Uh, if some someone would have had to tell me it was him, he was in radio in Georgia in a smaller station, yes. and yeah, he he did. Dick Clark, who was a famous broadcaster, started in radio. A lot of got Jimmy no. Kimmel started in radio. That's not. There's a no lot way that's of people him. that are famous now. Oh, what in the what? That's Ryan okay, Seacrest. Do yourself a favor, and what did you Google for that? Uh, I just I just Google Ryan, Ryan Seacrest's yearbook. yearbook photo. Oh, you know wow. what? What I'll do is I'll, sure that's I'll post it. Yes, it's it's circulated. Um, I will post it to our uh, potty okay. uh, group Good on idea. Facebook. If you want to join, just text the word potty p o d d i to nine one nine seven nine, and you can join. But I will post it there. It, so unfortunately, it. like I look at that and go, "Wow, what? Look what he turned into. He reinvented himself. Right. Good for him." As Possible a kid, for anyone. Yeah, but then I'm like, that's too late for me. Like I already well, looked yeah. like that before picture uh, now, <laughs> and that's too late for me. You know, so something gummit. happened. Ryan Seacrest, you and your how did he get cheekbones from those cheeks? I don't understand it. <laughs> he he changed a I lot. I guess we've all everyone who's chubby has something yeah. hidden beneath. And I will say huh. that he is starting to look a little bit older. You're starting yeah. to see his age on we'll him a little bit. Stretch. Yeah, we'll yeah. stretch on the eyes. Yeah, but yeah. it's not terrible. No, it's still not good. Ryan Seacrest is still way better looking than me. guys can age easier. Yeah. It's more distinguishing, whereas women, it just looks like they're... Yeah. I think like our capper, for like a capper for guys, when, it, when you truly can go downhill, is like, I feel like you don't enter your like mid to late seventies looking good. Like nobody gets to that point where you're like, wow, like you're still like super fit or something. Yeah. Like you may still have some good hair. Like like if I think of like Harrison Ford, he has like great hair still, but he's got great hair. He looks old. He's 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 on the like, yeah, it looks like he could like hunch over a little. How yeah. do you think Ryan? Um, well, Gosling? Reynolds. Oh, Ryan Reynolds. He'll be beautiful till he dies. He'll also spend. <laughs> yeah. They'll probably spend the money to do it, too. and rightfully so. Like science should keep him beautiful uh, because he uh, will be amazing. Like all the way. Do you till want he to does. say something else? I mean, do you want to say more? Do you want to keep going? I'd like to. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he is a beautiful man. <laughs> He is, yeah. but that's okay for me to say. Oh, no, it's fine for me to say, too. I can appreciate the, what the Lord does. Uh, mm, no, that's like, true. The Lord's I wish, work. I wish I looked like Ryan Reynolds. Are you kidding me? Like, Who? What, what guy would? I know, like, the door's open for you. And I, Look, honestly, you, you can argue this all day long, but good-looking people, like, it's not fair. They get they get some breaks that, uh, like, us ugly people don't. Like, <laughs> well, I mean. I got to work hard, to, like, in radio to keep doing this thing, and, like, good-looking people end up on TV. I would take, like, true. one thing. Like, I would take, like, he. He's got, you know, for these people out there who are above six feet, look right. good, well built, and obviously they work hard on sure. the well built thing, but they were blessed with the with the extra six inches. I would mm. kill. Yeah. And yeah, the, and for like hair. six just inches. Just one of those. Just yeah. one of those one things. Thing, give me yeah. one thing. Give me Ryan Reynolds' hair. Beautiful or give me eyes. his cheekbones. Like, yeah. Just give me that. The jawline. I would like the jawline. Honestly, I like, because I don't have a, a strong jawline. Because well, then if you had a strong jawline, you could. Do like not a beard. Like I some like I still I love my beard. I'm never yeah. gonna I don't wanna give it up. But like if I didn't have to have it, I'd be fine. Hey, I'd you were gonna shave. I said after a wedding in April. Oh, end, okay. end, of, end of April. Okay. Yeah, it's I cannot coming. wait for that. Yeah, we're it's gonna coming. shave Gavin. Can I shave you? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Good. No, no, the whole point is to do it nice. in this room. Nice. So. This is great. Like I, I when I shaved that one time, uh, it oh. was fun because I shaved different versions of me and took photos. And mm -hmm. we'll do that too. Like yep. we'll we'll shave like a, we'll give you a Fu Manchu. I want to know what the mustache thing looks like. We'll give, I, I we'll don't give think you a straight gonna, up mustache. I don't think I'll look good because I don't. I think mustaches work for skinnier 
guys. Yeah. I don't think it works for like, you know. My friend has the chubby. worst mustache and he will not shave it off. And it is Don't hideous. talk about Jake like that. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, my buddy in Florida has the mustache of the villain Jim Carrey played in Sonic 2. Mm. And, and like, I'm not making this up. It is horrible. <laughs> it's a bold choice. Yeah, it's horrible. And like, he's a good looking dude. Like, he can kind of pull it off. It's kind of like when good looking people wear um, like really bad glasses. They're like, oh, I'm so good looking. Like, even these can't make me ugly. Mm. You're just showing off. Yeah, that is a terrible <laughs> mustache. Showing off. Showing You're showing off how good looking you are. <laughs> like, I have to wear glasses because God hated my eyes. Wow. Like, I'm already working against things Someone working is against me. Better party of two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. All right. That's going to do it for your aftercast for As today. As always, thanks for being a potty.